Hey guys, RC here, back with Bullbound College Football. This is episode 14, uh, and we are ending up season two today, or at least the regular season. If we get to a bowl game, we may uh, have to extend this out one episode. But uh, we are three and five on the season, uh, two and two in the conference. So three games, or two games behind Louisiana Monroe in the loss column. Uh, we are needing three wins in our four games left to become bowl eligible. Doesn't mean we'll get one because you got to remember we are low prestige in one of the lower prestige conferences. So only this conference champion is guaranteed uh, a bowl game. But if we get to six, at least we're in the running. So we'll give it a try. So today we are back at home against Florida Atlantic, who's two and seven on the season. There is your matchup. We are actually picked uh, as the favorites in this one uh, based on offense. Special teams is kind of a split. Key matchup, their front seven allows 136 yards rushing a game, and we average 3.42. You know what? Based on that, this is one of those things, do I go in and over and do, go away from my game plan thus far and try to run the ball more? Maybe, but I'm going to say no. <laughs> Let's not. Let's go ahead and sim out the week and see what happens. And this one goes to overtime. So this is kind of a reversal of the last game last episode. Uh, we were actually losing 13 to nothing. Uh, at the start of the fourth quarter, Carlos Williams hit Joseph White for an 11-yard score. James Randall hit a 24-yard field goal to make it 13-10. And then with 30 seconds left in the game, uh, he hit a 22-yard 22 22-yard 22 field goal to make it a 13-13 tie. And then you go to overtime in American football, and we won with a 10-yard Williams to White pass as they hook up for the second time in the game. And we win this one 20 to 13. Uh, we actually had nine more first downs, 528 yards of offense, 49 out of 75. So that's huge. That's about a 75% completion rate, which is, you know, that you're going to win a lot of games if you can hit 75% passing. Uh, four of six in the red zone. So, you know, only two of six on field goals. So maybe I need to scale those field goals back even a little bit more. Uh, Williams, 415 yards, two touchdowns. Uh, Miller, nine carries for 84 yards. That's a 9.33 average. So that's right there. Uh, double what we are looking for for a good running attack. Carpenter in double digits for catches in this one. And Joseph White, player of the game, eight catches, 57 yards, two touchdowns. And that's a big win for us to make us three and two in the conference. But more importantly, one more win towards being bowl eligible. Now we only need two out of three, not three out of four. And next up is Florida International, and we are favored in this one as well. So we're favored by four in this one. And this is pretty much a must-win game. Unfortunately, Florida International did not get the memo. And this kind of reminds me of a, a couple of games back. Uh, pretty evenly matched. They had us by 90 yards in total offense. We were right at that 50% threshold. They were over 50%. Not dramatically, but enough. We had three interceptions. That's that's critical. We both had fumbles, and we both lost two fumbles. But that's five turnovers for us to only two. Kind of the rule of thumb, real life is more than more than three turnovers, uh, you don't win a game. That's you know, and it's not a guarantee, but it, it's that's kind of the rule of thumb. Uh, in American football, the NFL, as well as college. And we did not have a single field goal attempt. But check this out. So we actually took a uh, 7 nothing lead. They got a pair of field goals to make it 7-6. Uh, 
A touchdown made it 12-7 Florida International in the third. And then they got three touchdowns in the fourth quarter. Now, one of them was a fumble return by Richard Warren, 34 yards, just to break it open. But they were already winning 26-14 at that point. Williams, 332 yards, two touchdowns, three interceptions. He's just, you know, that's what we're going to get out of him. He'll, he'll have 50% games. Some days he'll be a little better. Some days a little worse. Uh, Miller, 9.4 again. So that is an indicator to me that maybe against similar competition levels that we need to go with a little bit more running. I'm going to go ahead and go through this week. Uh, because we're not playing. Um, so, yeah, that's that's something I have to think about. You know, and this is kind of changing your tactics in, in football manager. You know, where's, you know, what's the other team weak against? Is that, you know, can you are you strong enough to possibly get something done? One of the other things that I t- do take a look at, and this is an example. So I've, I've mentioned more m- multiple times that the third person is always going to be your highest rated, and we'll just confirm that. So he's 1597, 1596, 1492. Relatively close, but Evans, the last one, is the highest ranked. Now, the other thing you have to look at is notice where they're from. This guy's in the, the receiver, Harris, is in the West region, so much farther away to go recruiting. He's going to be one of those $4,000 recruits instead of a $2,000 recruit. Jarrell is Atlantic East, so he's out of region as well, whereas Evans is in the Southeast. So that means he may even be in Louisiana. I ha- you know, I'd have to look. But... He, you know, he's going to be the cheapest guy to recruit. So that may play a role in your decision making. Just something I just wanted to point that out. Again, I don't play, take a lot of time to look through the award finalists because they're just long and drawn out. And the awards are not always the right choices. All right, so we're playing Louisiana Monroe this week. They are 8-3 and three on the season. Now we have to win both of our games just to get bowl eligibility. Some good news after doing our depth chart. Fleming will be back in the starting lineup. Uh, he is now probable for z- up to two more weeks. Uh, but you can see everybody else has kind of fallen down the list. Got our running backs are crap. Uh, let's see. So we'll save that. All right. We are getting ready to go. So let's sim it out and see what happens. So I did make a decision to go with a different, uh, game plan and it was more run oriented, still, still leaning past, but a lot more balanced, uh, than we have been going recently. So let's take a look. 14 to 13 on first downs. You can see total yardage way down. It's typically easier to pass for high yardage than to run, but you can see we had 37 carries. We were averaging, what, about 15 to 17 carries a game, so about 20 more, and we got 88 yards. So running the ball does a couple of things. One, it wears down the opposing line. I don't know how much of that's coded into the game, but in real life, it's not uncommon that you, you know, run oriented teams don't run the ball for a whole lot in the first and second quarter. Third quarter starts getting a little better. And then in the fourth quarter, when they've just worn down the defense uh, with the blocking and just the pounding, uh, they're able to really dominate a game in the fourth quarter. Uh, so so uh, the second thing it does, it takes more time off the clock. You have to remember, if you throw the ball, the old saying was in the old days when I was young, uh, that you know if you threw the ball, three things could happen and two of them were bad. Well, you could complete the ball. That was the good thing. It could be an incompletion, which was bad, and it stopped the clock, which was bad all on the same play, 
or it could be intercepted for a turnover, which was bad. So that's why running was real predominant in the, the game of football, American football, for so long. It's very similar to the NBA. Uh, it used to be inside the paint, slam dunks, layups. Those were considered the safest bet, the highest percentage shot. And it's true. Uh, you know, you could shoot 50, 60, 70 percent from the floor uh, doing a lot of layups and mid-range jumpers. Uh, but now, you know, and, and you'd, you'd shoot 30 percent from three point line, uh, the three point line. But then they've kind of looked at it with analytics and go, yeah, but if we're getting one extra point on one of every three possessions, we actually come out ahead, you know? So I don't know. It's, it's, it's just the new generation. And so now football has become more of a pass oriented spread type attack. And, uh, but if you have a bad team, this is something you could look at running the ball. So you can see we actually had the ball for over 30 minutes. If you go back and look at some of the other box scores, we were around 23, 24 minutes. So we're taking six minutes of possession away from the other team that they don't have a chance to score, which is good. Um, and, you know, our yardage is down, but now we're in line with what these other teams are getting. Uh, 22 out of 37, well over the 50% mark. Uh, only one interception. One fumble, so very evenly matched here. Uh, we had a couple of field goals, then a six-yard run. Uh, then we got a 76-yard interception return, a pick six, which gave us a defensive touchdown, and then a 15-yard touchdown pass while they were playing from behind, 19-0 deficit. And they do get the touchdown late, but we already had the game wrapped up at that point. And remember, this is Louisiana Monroe. They were eight and three coming into this game. We were four and six. And now we are five and six, and they're eight and four. So we we've done a good thing. We've given them their first conference loss of the season. That's huge. So game plan kind of worked out there. All right, we have one game left against Toledo. Now, conference play is done. So Louisiana Monroe is the conference champion. We have eight teams in this conference, so you play each, other, each team once, which is seven games, so everybody's finished. So they've won, their, they've won the Sun Belt Conference. They are the champions, so they've gotten silverware for winning the Sun Belt, and they will get the automatic bowl berth now, with an 8-4 and four record, that's 12 games. They're also done. Uh, we, on the other hand, only have 11. So we can finish second with a win overall, and that would put us up to, uh, you know. So anyway, we've got a shot here, but we've got to go out and get it done on the field. And taking a look at Toledo, they're 6-5, and five, and they went 6-2 and two in their conference. So they're not going to be an easy get. All right, taking a look at the preview, they are heavily favored. Uh, we, get, we gain more offensively, but they give up less defensively. And our wide receiver, Joseph White, against their secondary, they're only giving up 207 yards a game, which is pretty good. Remember, you get more yards passing uh, than you do rushing tr typically. So. That would be another indicator that we want to go back to the, the more run-oriented, uh, which we're going to stay with, so let's find out what happens. Unfortunately, for us, it wasn't even close. We got shut out 26-0, to zero, uh, only 12 first downs. They had almost 400 yards. Uh, we only had two yards of carry and 28 minutes of time of possession. Uh, no fumbles, only one interception, but 14 out of 41 for Williams, not a way to end the season, well below what he was doing. Uh, 14 for 54, so the running idea kind of worked out, not to the level we'd like it, but it wasn't bad. And um, yeah, so we just didn't get it done. Uh, Dwight Mitchell, the free safety, 
That's our free safety. So he had 10 tackles and one pass defended. So a defended pass, that's kind of a weird statistic. So you have inter- you have interceptions where you, your defensive player catches the ball in the air when the other team is attempting a pass play. That's an interception. A defended pass is you don't intercept it, but you make a play on the ball while it's in route to the receiver and you knock it away forcing an incompletion. That would be a defended pass. Almost as good as an interception. The only difference is you don't get the ball for your team. But remember, it's a law, you know, it's an incomplete pass, stops the clock, and it costs them a down, and you only get four downs to make a first down. So that's a you know that's a good result. But that is a bad finish to the season. So We're not going to be invited to a bowl game. Uh, We did not have any award winners, at least not national. So what we're going to do is I will come back for next episode. We will do an end-of-season wrap-up, look at the award winners, and then uh, take a look at our recruiting class. So much like we do in Football Manager, we'll do the season review first. I'll pause the recording. I will do all the recruiting off camera for the entire off season, and then we'll take a look at what what players I get, uh, and that'll allow us to get through it a little shorter period of time and only one episode instead of drawing recruiting out to two or three episodes like we have in the first two seasons. Well, guys, hit that like button for me. Subscribe for daily content here on the channel. Let me know in the comments below what you think. Also, we can come down here into history. And so we went four and eight last year, four and three in the conference, five and seven this year, but four and three in the conference again, fourth place last year, and fourth place this year. So We had a net gain of one win, but we did not improve in the conference. We finished fourth again. So, you know, um, hopefully, hopefully that extra overall win, though, will be good enough to get us back up to that 30 percent reputation. And, you know, then we can start building from there. We've got to have a good year recruiting this year. But we did improve. Maybe I'll get a phone call for another job. We'll find out next episode. Have a good one, guys. Bye.